I've been asked loads now and I feel like it's time that I actually made this video but so many of you have asked me how I go about shooting with the Pocket 2, the DJI Pocket 2 indoors in low light so I wanted to talk about that and show you how I do it and show you a few tips as to how you can get better quality footage because a lot of you are saying that your footage comes out really noisy and really grainy so I'm just going to go through what I do and how I set the camera up and what lighting I use and how you can make your footage look better. I'm also just going to set up my 360 camera so that I can show you my lighting around the room because at the moment I've got three lights on, I'm filming with three lights on and uh, just be easy if you can see it in like three six see it in 360 or just be easier for me to show you with the 360 camera when I switch the light off and when the light's not on so cool that looks like it will work okay okay so at the moment I've got my I've got three lights on I've got my main light which is my aperture 120d which I think is on okay so that's only on 63 percent and I've got my Aperture 60D, which I think is full on full brightness. And then behind me, I've got my Wii Light Ninja 200, which is on 100%. And I pretty much just use that light for um, ambient light in the room. And that's one of the things, so one of the tips is actually using one of your lights to make ambient light in the room. So if you've got one light which is on you, so I'm standing in, I'm standing uh, next to my Aperture 120D which has a massive soft box on it so it's got the light dome 2 on it and this one is basically lighting myself so it's lighting my face and that's what I'm using that light as it's my key light and then the We Light Ninja 200 is the light that's lighting the rest of the room so let me just find the remote and I'll switch it off so that you can see you can see the difference and at the moment my exposure meter is reading at zero. Normally I would say um, shooting in D-Cine like, which is one of the other tips, is to shoot in D-Cine like. I would say to make sure that that is, I'd say as close to zero as possible, or like plus one, but I haven't got my phone attached at the moment and because the Mimo app's messing around a little bit, but if you set your, make sure that your EV meter is reading zero or close to um, plus one, so don't, you don't want to go above plus one because then your footage is going to be blown out but essentially let me just switch that light off in the back so i've just switched off my wee light 200 my wee light ninja 200 so i've just got the is that recording yeah so i've just got the aperture 120d on and the um aperture 60d on at the moment uh i don't have a remote for that aperture 60d which is really annoying but i'll switch that off in a second but let me just switch that off now so that you can see Okay, so that is now the Aperture 120D light off as well, and I've just got the Ninja, sorry, the Aperture, no. So that's the Aperture 60D which is off now, and I've just got the Aperture 120D on, and my meter is still showing at zero, um, just zero. So if I switch, let me just get the other remote for this. Where's the remote? So I'm gonna turn this down. So that light is on at 63% at the moment. So I'm gonna turn it down and my meter, my EV meter is reading at minus one. So this is what the footage looks like. So if I now went into my, I don't know if I can do this whilst I'm recording. No, I can't. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna turn my ISO up so that you can see how the footage looks. So just before I changed my ISO, I just went in and realized that my so all the footage prior to this that I've just been talking about, my ISO was set to an auto max ISO of 800 because I just did a previous video where I was talking about this whole thing. So I'm going to now go back and I'm going to switch my ISO to 100. I'm going to switch all the lights back on and kind of start again. <laughs> so I've just switched my lights back on and my meter reading is showing at uh, plus three at the moment. So my Aperture 120D is set to 100%, my 
uh, 60D is also at 100% and the wee light is at 100% and my ISO is set to 200. So that was one of the things, I don't know if I just mentioned this, but that's one of the things is keeping your ISO as low as possible. And the only way to do that is to have lighting. So like I said, um, I'm just gonna switch, I'm gonna turn some of the lights off now and I'm going to crank the ISO up really high so that you can see the difference between having the lighting and then the ISO settings. So let me turn this light down and my meter is reading at minus 0 0.7. I'm going to switch off the wee light behind me. So now my meter is at minus 3 and the 60D light is still on, so I'm gonna just go switch that one off. So now I've just got my Aperture 120D on and I'm gonna crank up my ISO to compensate for the loss of light. So some of you might not be using lights that are powerful enough to also light up the room. And that's the other thing that you need to consider. If you're gonna be shooting a lot with the Pocket 2 indoors, you're gonna need a light source, which is going to at least light up enough of the room so that you're not having to push your ISO up really high. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like now with the ISO cranked up really high. So now my ISO is at 1600 and my aperture 120D light is at 51% and um, my meter, my EV meter is reading at, it keeps going between zero and plus zero one point, is it plus zero point three. So yeah, the ISO is compensating for the, the low light. So I'm expecting the footage to be quite grainy at this point. I can't see it on the monitor because it's quite, on the display because it's quite small. So yeah, they were my points. If you're using a light source which is quite dim, so I know a couple of you have been using ring lights for your key light and my key light is the 120D with this massive soft box on it. So if you can put, if you can use a bigger light source and, and also one that's a lot more powerful, then you're not gonna have to crank your ISO up to be um, quite high, so something like 1600 or 30, 3200. I'm just gonna switch back to the proper lighting so that I can close out the video with footage that doesn't look so crap. Okay, so I've just got my 60D on at the moment. It's not even pointing at my face. My meter is at minus 3.0. So I'm just gonna introduce the lights back and my ISO is set to 200 as well. So I'm gonna reintroduce the lights and then you can see what the footage looks like essentially. So that's my 120D that just went on. And then this is the Wii Light Ninja 200 behind me. My EV is reading minus 0 0.7. I'm just gonna turn the 120D light up a bit more. And let's just do it 100%. So 100%, I feel like if I could see this on my phone, I feel like this part of my face would potentially be clipping because it'd be quite bright, but we'll see. So my 120D is now 100% and the meter, the EV meter is reading um, zero, plus 0 0.3. So like I said, having a massive light source which is going to emit enough light to kind of flood the room with light is going to be the best way to do it so having just a ring light isn't necessarily going to do that or having two ring lights um, the other thing is my wee light is pointed towards the ceiling so if you can bounce light um, off the ceiling to kind of flood more light into the room that is also going to help and just Putting, positioning lights in different, it depends how big your room is as well, it really does because my room's quite small and if I switched off the um, the 60D, the one that's uh, facing this way at the moment, which is normally, I normally have it facing more towards me, so so it's kind of my fill light, I use it as my fill light and this, so this, the 120D is my key light and the 60D is my, is my fill light. So if you guys have like two ring lights, if you had one of them as your um, key light and the other one as your fill light um, you could get another light to go in the background like the Wii Light Ninja 200 
or the Godox SL60 or something like that with a soft box, point it up to the ceiling and have it at 100% brightness and that's going to give your room even more brightness. So yeah, that is that is the best way that, that you can do it. Um, when you're filming yourself, you're filming your talking heads and you want the footage to look decent. So I feel like this was a really long video, but hopefully it's helped. And if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below. Check out some more of the Pocket 2 videos and uh, yeah, see you on the next one.